In this video, I will explain how to import a scan into a 3D slicer in order to get a 3D skull. In the second part of the video, I will show you how to select only the thin portion of the facial bones, for example, like can be found in an orbit. The first step is to import the DICOM images. DICOM documents are the raw data acquired from a radiology department, for example, on either a USB key or a CD. Here, I transferred the files onto my computer for this demonstration. We select the scan that we want to use and double click on it. 3D Slicer then shows us the scan images, but as you can see, we can't yet see the 3D image. The next step is to use the tool Segment Editor, which can be found in the upper left portion of the toolbar. We then click Add to add a new reconstruction. Here, I renamed it Skull. Next, to reconstruct only the bone, we use the threshold tool and put the desired density at more than 350 so that only the bone is selected by the program. Then you click apply. We can see in the scan images that the bone has been selected in green. In order to show the 3D image, click on the show 3D button. Then we click on this button in the upper left side of the 3D image to center the image. Next, we use the same toolbar to achieve an orthographic view. As you can see here, there is some debris around the scan, so we will use the scissors tool to easily remove the unwanted portion. Simply left-click your mouse and drag it around whatever is to be removed. Now, if we want to move the model around, we go back to the left side toolbox and select None. Now we can move the image around. Holding down the left mouse pad and dragging moves the image around while the right mouse pad zooms in and out. If the image gets uncentered, as you can see here, the coronal axis can be controlled by holding down the control button and using your left mouse pad to recenter the scan. The last step is to export the image which can be done using the drop-down arrow by the segmentation tool on the left-hand toolbar. The image is then exported as an STL file or an OBJ file and can now be used in a 3D program. So now I'll show you how to select very thin bone, like the orbit for example. You can see here that the orbital bone was so thin that when we selected 350 for the density, it was not included in the 3D rendering technique so let's say you want to select the right orbit to eventually reconstruct the left orbit. Here's what you can do. On the left side of the toolbar, you will select paint and keep the 3% diameter. Check the boxes sphere brush and edit in 3D views. Then click on the editable intensity range. The numbers you want to use here are trial and error, but usually they'll be between 45 and 150 range. Here, we're going to use 55 to 130, and it seemed sufficient for our image. You can see here when I paint the images on the coronal view, you can see the same paintbrush moving on the 3D model. We're going to disactivate the 3D view because leaving it on lengthens the process. So we go through each slice of the coronal view, painting the parts of the orbit with what we want to print. If you go past the lines, and it's important for your print, you can use the erase function, which acts like the opposite of our paint icon, to erase any of the parts that you don't want to include. Looking at the 3D model now, we can see there are still some small holes remaining, but that it's adequate for 3D printing. If we want to improve these small defects, we can use the tool Smoothing on the left side toolbar. It's a bit trial and error, but here we use 1mm and closing, or in fill holes, 
when we use this filter, it's important to make sure it doesn't fill in important anatomical holes like the optic canal or the inferior orbital fissure. Everything is ready for export now, so we export the file in an STL format and we'll now move on to our 3D software.